we're going to look at the life and death of a star. We'll start with the death of a star. I'm sorry, this is the wrong slide. This is a death star, not the death of a star. Excuse me. This is the death of a star. Anyway, we need to look at this HR diagram to get some idea of the paths taken by the stars. The key points. The most populated areas of the HR diagram are where the stars spend most of their time. What's called the zero age main sequence is where the stars spend 99% of their lives. Then they move off the, the, the main sequence when the hydrogen starts to get depleted. So our sun, for example, will move from its position, which is here, to the upper right and become a red giant. Then suddenly the helium will ignite and it will start burning helium into carbon. Then it will heat up, it will contract, and then it will become a yellow giant. And then it will move to a super giant or the second giant phase until the helium is nearly depleted. And then it will basically stop burning. The outside will drift off into space as a planetary nebula. And what will be left is the white ember, the white core, the carbon core of the star. So the outer shell will drift off into space leaving uh, a planetary nebula. What is left is the white dwarf. And it moves from this point of high luminosity to very dim luminosity, but it ends up being much hotter because it's just the core. It's going to be 20 or 30,000 Kelvin. And here we have the same thing again. This is a good graphic which shows you that from now, we're, we're here in four and a half or three or four billion years, we're going to be moving off the main sequence, become a red giant, until the hydrogen stops burning, the helium will start to ignite, and then it will contract a little bit, turn into a yellow giant, and then it will drift on to being in the second phase of the red giant, or a red super giant, until all the helium is basically used up, and then uh, the outside of the star will drift into space. Notice that 9 billion years is spent on the main sequence, 1 billion is as a red giant, and really next to nothing it goes into the yellow giant, the second phase of the red giant and planetary nebula, then white dwarf. That happens very quickly in the last fraction of the, of the lifetime of the star. You should be able to sketch the paths of different sized stars from uh, the main sequence to death. So this is the, what we looked at, this blue line here, and then to White Dwarf. You need to know with a five solar mass star, the kind of path it takes. Same thing, it turns into a, a red giant. Then it will, uh, the helium will start to burn. It becomes a little bit um, hotter. Not much smaller though, because it's a much bigger star. And then it will end up being a, a red super giant. And the same for a 10 solar mass star. Notice these are sketched until this becomes a planetary nebula. These will turn into supernovas. So here we have the uh, smaller star. The main sequence is most of the life. Turns into red giant. Then for briefly a helium burning star. And then into the second uh, giant phase. And then the outside will drift into space. You get a planetary nebula left with a white dwarf. What's happened with a large mass star is that you have, a, for example, a blue star it will become a, a red supergiant and then then the helium will start to burn it will become a bit hotter and a bit smaller and then it will be a supergiant again but then it will explode as a supernova and turn either into a neutron star or a black hole and we need to know which one it's going to turn into this graphic shows very nicely it breaks it into three kinds of stars small stars which is this uh, red bracket, medium size, blue and um, large stars which are the black bracket for the small stars. If the core, what's left of the, the middle of the star, is less than 1.4 solar masses, the final state will be a white dwarf and a planetary nebula. And this is up to this limit here which is called the Chandrasekhar limit. 
So less than 1.4 solar masses, it will become a white dwarf and a planetary nebula. In an intermediate sized star, less than two solar masses and greater than 1.4 solar masses, it will become a supernova and turn into a neutron star. But then there's a third limit. If it's greater than two solar masses for the core, this is called the Oppenheimer-Volkoff limit, then it will turn into a supernova and end as a black hole. So a small star turns into a red giant planetary nebula white dwarf. A larger star will be a red supergiant and then will explode as a supernova and turn into a neutron star or a black hole if the core is greater than two solar masses. And this is the original HR diagram. The interesting thing is that a star, which is 15 times the size of the Sun, will have a lifetime of 10 million years, which is nothing. The dinosaurs died 50 million years ago. The Sun, which will last for 10 to the 10 years, is going to live for a thousand times as long as one of these blue stars. So the blue stars are very massive. They have a lot of pressure, a lot of temperature, a lot of fusion. They burn themselves out very quickly and end with a massive explosion. Stars like the Sun um, are much calmer. They live for much longer. They will turn into red giants and eventually the outside of the Sun will just drift into space. It will not become a supernova but will be left as a white dwarf.